Good morning, I'm Sarah Bennett with Nebraska Business Development Center, part of our innovation and technology commercialization team. Um, and today's event is about SAM registrations, the process for that and uh, the paperwork that's required. Um, and this session is part of our science, agriculture and energy technology innovation cohort. Um, and this morning you'll be hearing from Quentin Farley, who's part of uh, Nebraska Business Development Center's PTAC team, focusing on government contracting. So I'll give you a quick overview about our, um, our SAGE Innovation Cohort, if you're not familiar with it, and then we'll go ahead and dive into the content. So what this cohort focuses on is uh, small business innovation research, so SBIR opportunities, specifically with the USDA, the National Science Foundation, and the Department of Energy. Um, all of our events are on this web link you can see here, so nbbc.unomaha.com edu backslash sage. Uh, so what we have is a series of events from June uh, through September uh, with grant deadlines in October for the Department of Energy and USDA. Normally USDA has put out their RFA by July. Uh, we're still waiting. We hope that it's in the days to come. Usually it's out by now. So um, we already had some events and all of that content is, is recorded and available to view uh, if you did miss some of our previous sessions. So what's coming up as you look ahead, um, on August 19th, we will be doing a proposal prep uh, for USDA. So this is going to be a longer session. We're partnering uh, with a third party to do this session to really help you put those pieces together and what's really important in a proposal. Uh, then on the 25th, we're talking more about the commercialization plan portion of your proposal and really honing in on what's important as you look at ultimately taking your innovation to market. And then um, on September 15th, we're going to have a session. Uh, originally was slated to be more of a custom discuss how were things going so far with your proposal for USDA, specifically in um, Department of Energy. Uh, that session may be uh, modified a little bit since we are still waiting for that USDA RFA. But we will have an event for sure on the 15th of September. It just maybe look a little bit different to align with where the timing is on this federal RFA. Um, so as you have questions, please go ahead and enter them into the question and answer portion. If you've got technical issues, drop those into the chat feature. Uh, we may go through questions as uh, the session goes on, depending on timing, um, and we'll absolutely leave time at the end to address your questions as well. So at this point, I will turn it over to Quentin Farley. Uh, he's going to talk to you about SAM registrations uh, as part of your SBIR proposal. So I will... Uh, go ahead and turn it to you, Quentin. Yeah, All right, thank you, screen. Sarah. And my screen is up. Or is it getting there? Okay, we, him. There we go. Perfect. We good now? All right. Well, uh, thank you, Sarah. And as, as you mentioned, I'm Quentin Farley. I'm with the uh, PTAC of uh, NBDC. And I know this um, uh, this uh, workshop was titled How to Register in SAM, but there is so much work that needs to be done before that happens. Uh, I feel a more appropriate title is, is more uh, government contracting registrations. So just a, a really, really quick um, overview of what a PTAC center is and does. Uh, we provide specialized and professional assistance to businesses that are interested in pursuing government contracting opportunities with federal, state, and local governments at no charge. And, and please remember that, no charge. Uh, we inform businesses about the requirements to be a government contractor, which is what we're focusing on today. Uh, we assist with the registration process, and I really want to emphasize that assist. Um, it's, it's, um, we are always happy when someone welcomes us into the, that process so that uh, we make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and everything's done right because it can really cause problems later on. And then we also enlighten businesses about the, the contracting opportunities. So 
the very first thing you need to do when um, getting properly registered to do business with the government is you need to determine what type of business structure you're going to have. Are you going to be a sole proprietorship? Are you going to be in a single member LLC or a full LLC? Are you going to be an S Corp? Um, those determinations need to be made as you set your business up. And working with your small business development uh, counselor uh, with MBDC uh, is really key uh, to that. They can help you make that determination and get you started uh, down that process. But you know, to register your business with the Secretary of State office, you would go to this website um, and you would follow, just follow their commands through there in, in progressing on setting that up. So that's really the first step. Then you need a taxpayer identification number. And this is where your organization of your business kind of determines that how that number is going to be assigned. Corporations will have to have their own tax ID number. Um, if you're going to be a sole proprietor and you're just going to file under your social security number, then, then there's that route. Um, but again, your small business development counselor can help you determine those things. But when you go to register in the system for awards management the first thing they check is your status with the irs and i have had businesses in the past who have wanted to register quickly in sam and they hadn't gone through this process yet and it can take up to 21 days for your tax id once you file for it to be found in the system with the irs so I have had SAM registrations fail because even though they had gotten their tax ID number and it was all set up, it hadn't worked its way through their electronic system for the SAM system to recognize it. So um, getting all of these things done in order and ahead of time are, are key to having a successful registration. Uh, one of the things you currently need but is going away here probably in the next year. It was supposed to have gone away, away already, but that's a registration with Dun & Bradstreet. The government has a, um, a, a website you can go to uh, to register for the free uh, Dun & Bradstreet registration, um, or you can contact your PTAC counselor. And we have a hotline, special phone number that we can call and um, we will uh, we will be able to um, get that registered over the phone, and then that usually takes a couple days to become active. So it's really important that your Secretary of State registration match your DUNS registration for registering in SAM. Um, there's just some dominoes that fall into place. Should what you enter in uh, Sam not match what's on Dun and Bradstreet, um, then it will get kicked back out and rejected. So there are just there are just things we need to do and make sure everything's in place to make that happen. Um, so as I mentioned, um, there are there's changing changes that are coming that will eliminate the Duns requirement, um, but you will still need to have a DUNS number for the cybersecurity maturity model certification. And that is a certification that is going to be needed if you are going to do contracting with the Department of Defense. Uh, basically, they rate your business uh, cybersecurity uh, efforts on levels between one and five uh, to make sure that you are taking the proper procedures to protect their information. Um, all businesses will need to, uh, if they're doing work with the DOD, you'll need to uh, do a self-assessment on a, a website that they have set up, and then you need to report that score. Uh, you will not be able to receive or bid on solicitations unless they know your score. Uh, and this is something that's probably going to trickle down to all federal contracting. Right now, it's just with the Department of Defense. 
but uh, at the very minimum, you'll need at least a level one certification. And so once you get through all this process of registering in SAM and you need to work on that, contact your PTAC uh, counselor and we can, um, we, can, we can work on that and explain to you just what they're looking for in those different levels and how to go about all that. So now you're ready to start your, your SAM registration. Well, what is the purpose? Well, the purpose is to qualify businesses for government contracting and grants through a vetting process that ensures that the entities are legitimate. Um, there are fake uh, SAM websites that mirror the SAM website. And um, if, you, if you happen to get on those sites, um, it can, you can be very dangerous. You can you can um, enter information and have it get into hands that you don't want it getting into. And I'll go into that in just a little bit. Um, Chrome and Firefox seems to be the best browsers to use. Safari and Edge tend to be um, to have more issues when you get in there. Um, and you need to have all your information ready. It's and at your fingertips. Uh, it can get uh, kind of frustrating uh, not having that when they ask the questions, if you have to go looking for it and have your session time out and have to start over. So it's, it's always good to have the necessary information handy. So this is the information that you're going to want to have handy. You're going to want to have your DUNS number. You're going to want to have your tax ID number or social security number. Um, you want to Make sure you know what type of business your registration as far as um, set aside categories and also what type of business, if you're registering it as um, a sole proprietorship or single member LLC, S Corp, those organizational papers are going to um, come in handy uh, just to know how you have your business organized. You want to know your gross sales per year average over the last three or five years. And if you're a new business and you haven't had any revenues, that's okay. Uh, you, you will need to enter at least $1. But uh, if you've been in business a while, they're gonna wanna know those averages to help classify you as a, a large or a small business. And the same uh, reason for the total number of staffing. They'll wanna know that simply um, to whether to qualify you or quantify you as a large or a small business. And you're also gonna need to have your, your banking information. You'll need the routing uh, number, the account number, and the phone number to uh, the bank that you deal with. You'll also need to have your points of contact identified. Uh, they'll wanna know a electronic business point of contact, um, an accounting, point of contact, a government business point of contact. So if these are different people, you wanna make sure that you have them uh, identified before you go into to the registration. And if you're wanting to uh, certify as a woman-owned small business, it's important that the, uh, the female owner be identified as the electronic business point of contact and the government business point of contact. Uh, you'll want to know your NAICS or product service codes uh, when you register. That that tells the business, the government what type of business you're doing, and your PTAC counselor will assist you in identifying those numbers. So here we are. This is the um, the new SAM.gov site unveiled uh, earlier this summer, and uh, just a couple things to point out is uh, the website there, the HTTPS um, colon slash slash SAM.gov. You can also enter in www.SAM.gov and it should get you there. And if you notice uh, in the box on the right, they they put it pretty small and in gray, but that's where you will that's where you will sign in. Um, I don't know why they don't have it more obvious, but it's uh, kind of hard to see, but that's what you'll click to sign in. Um, what I want to show you here 
is this is a, a website that um, kind of looks official like the government, but it is not the site. You want to click out of it and go to the SAM, SAM.gov. Uh, we recently, I have this one because uh, less than a month ago, uh, we had a client go to this site. Our counselor had mentioned that he could help her get started. And the client said they could get started and if they had any questions, they would call. Well, the client called with a, a question that didn't, uh, that the counselor didn't think belonged with the registration process. And as they asked more questions, they found out that they had gone to this scam site. And at this scam site, they walk you through all of the same things that it takes to register in SAM. And that included their banking information and their IRS information. And um, it just, it just uh, made us sick to our stomach. And you know, we quickly told the client to, to call their bank and let them know uh, that their uh, account information had been compromised. But this is why we highly encourage you uh, to call your PTAC counselor for assistance in walking through this process. So when you create an account, you'll enter your email address um, and then they'll send you an email. So this is the very first time you're going to this site. You'll click sign in and this will pop up. So you pop it, you, you populate your, um, your email address and you click that create an account and um, they'll send you an email to confirm. And then once you, com you confirm, you go in and you'll have to create a password. And your password will have to pass their strength test, which is indicated by the color bars. Um, the first bar is red, second bar is yellow, and you must at least hit the third bar that is green for it to be an acceptable password. Please keep track of that password. It's not a fun process to reset the password. Um, you can also click on the show password button uh, to confirm what you've entered. So uh, you can type it in, click on the show password, take a look at it, and then write it down. And once the password is cre uh, created, it will ask for an authentic authentication method. And here are your choices. So the security key is, is like a USB flash drive that you plug into your computer. Um, most likely you won't have this. Uh, if you do for other reasons, then it, it's certainly something that can be used. If you're a federal employee, um, you'll have a PIV or CAC card uh, to use to authenticate yourself. Um, most of us are not federal employees. Um, there's a, another one that is in the more secure line, and that's the authentication, authentication application, uh, which is an app you can download like Google Authenticator. Um, the more popular ones, aren't quite as secure, but still work just fine, uh, is the phone call. A uh, lot of people choose this one. If you choose that, uh, you will either get a, a direct voice phone call, or you can ask to receive a text. And re receiving the text is the nine times out of 10 is, is the one my clients choose. Uh, if you receive a phone call or, or choose um, to have that, it is a, a voice call. And if you happen to have a phone system that is automated, uh, ran into this with a client this summer, uh, they just installed a new phone system to where it answers it and then it routes it to the uh, appropriate person or the most accessible person. And by the time they receive the call, the code has already been given and they they couldn't get the code written down to gain entrance and so um, they had to go through a whole process with the federal service desk to get them access to change that so that they could 
change the phone number and receive a text message or or choose a backup codes method, which if you choose the backup codes, they will give you a uh, 10 one-time use 12 digit codes. And you're thinking, okay, well, what happens when I use the 10th one? Well, when you use the 10th one, they send you a new set of codes. Uh, so, um, but those, um, you know, you'll have to keep track of each, where you store those and, and keep track of how many you use uh, to be able to gain access. So this is what it looks like with the most common method if you choose a, a text message. Um, if you, um, it, it'll just send you a, a, a text with the, with the code and then you'll have 10 minutes to enter that. If for some reason you're interrupted or uh, like when I was logging in this morning, it took, it took about five minutes for them to send the code, which is unusual. Typically it's pretty instant. Um, but should something happen, you can just click um, get another code um, right there. So you enter your code you receive in that box. And if you don't get it entered within 10 minutes, you can just click um, get another code and you'll have one uh, to enter. One thing, uh, a question I get a lot is, is it case sensitive uh, on the text they sent you? Uh, the text they send you, it's always capitalized, but you do not have to capitalize the um, letters when you enter them. Okay, so the very first time you sign in, you'll get this screen, and you'll need to agree to um, the terms, and then go on, and then there'll be another one. And this one um, will appear each time you log in, and so you'll have to accept the terms and conditions in order to proceed. This screen will come up then on your very first time logging in, uh, asking you to complete your profile. So you'll need to uh, complete it with your name and phone number and then click submit. And this section is optional and I recommend that for now that you skip this while it's optional. It's really mainly for people requesting roles for an entity that's already been registered in, in SAM and that there's already been an entity administrator assigned. Um, so uh, in this initial process, I just sort of recommend skipping it and moving on. So um, this is uh, the workspace that you'll land on and there's uh, important information on this dashboard. So this is what you'll get anytime you wanna log in to SAM and use it for all its other intended purposes other than um, completing a SAM registration. So um, it is really, they have, they change SAM to be a hub of information. Uh, so if you wanna do grant research, uh, contract research, wage determinations. There's all kinds of information on this website now. So um, they've, they've kind of consolidated it. So, but this is just getting us to the point where we can now go to um, register in SAM. Um, so once you've, you've had the entity registered, the active status will show a number one. Um, and you can be the entity administrator to more than one business. So that number in active will reflect the number of businesses you have access to. Uh, the next boxes refer to the status of your registrations. So to register your entity, we finally hit that point, you click on the register entity button. And there's multiple ways you can get there. Uh, but once you click there, this page will come up. Um, and there, it's just telling you the four key areas that you're going to need to uh, have information entered. So your core data, that equals your legal name, your DBA, DUNS, address, um, principal and other locations, your organizational structure, 
The assertions, those are your NAICS, your product service codes, your average yearly receipts, your banking information, your reps and certs equal the, those are your federal acquisition regulation questions. And this is the most lengthy part and the most confusing part. So again, have your PTAC counselor go through this process with you so they can help explain all the information and all the questions that are being asked. And the last part is a point of contact. So as I mentioned earlier, it's those primary points of contacts for accounts receivable, government business, electronic business, past performance, et cetera. So you click the start registration and it brings you up to another warning page that again reminds you of the information you'll need uh, to complete this registration. So um, you can either click continue or below this box is another start registration button. And you click that and this is where you get into the start of the registration. So you need to choose whether you business or organization, um, which you'll choose that one because you're not probably not going to be any of the others. Um, and you'll want to choose that simply because of, um, well, as you go down the next one where it says, why are you registering? You'll want to choose, uh, I want to be able to bid on federal contracts or other procurement opportunities. And I also want to be able to apply for grants, loans, and other financial assistance programs. So um, the ultimate goal of SBIR uh, is to um, get you, move you into a contracting phase. So you'll need to choose that first one. You don't wanna choose, I only wanna apply for federal assistance like grants, loans, and other financial assistance opportunities. Um, again, then it's just giving you the next, that you'll need to go through all of these um, sections. And <clears throat> this is where you'll enter, um, this is where they enter your DUNCE number. And it's really important that the information match exactly how it is registered with Dun & Bradstreet. And then this is really all the further I can take you into the registration process as the remaining screens can only be accessed during an actual registration with the business. And there's quite a bit of sensitive information there. So um, the only time I have access to it is when I assist um, another business in their process of registering. Uh, and again, I just highly recommend that you work with a PTAC counselor to assist you through those questions. Um, not only because the questions can be uh, kind of tricky and difficult to understand, but the website has some known bugs and can give you errors that uh, us PTAC counselors know how to dance around and get you through that. Whereas if you're just going through it and see those for the first time, you can get pretty frustrated. So, um, in completing uh, the SAM registration, some of the questions that covered are foreign ownership. Uh, they want to know if you've been legally convicted or debarred or have any tax liens. Um, and once you complete the SAM registration, um, it can take three to five weeks to process. Um, so um, once you submit it, you'll receive the IRS validation first. And if that fails, then we'll have to uh, figure out what was entered incorrectly. Nine times out of 10, it's the name that the uh, taxes are filed under. Uh, a lot of times uh, businesses will think that since it's on their personal taxes that it's filed under their personal name yet, um, the business does have its own tax ID number in that um, submission. So you really need to use the name that's on that tax ID number. Um, you may receive some follow-up questions for verifications. Um, the follow-up questions can seem kind of silly 
Um, the first ones usually are, but as it works down, it, it's really getting to what they want to know about. Uh, it, sometimes they, they want to know if it's a valid uh, address or if it's a virtual business address um, and or a virtual office. So there's just some, sometimes they find um, businesses with similar names and they want to know if there's a relationship between the businesses and you just have to be able to respond to those properly and and submit those and then once you've done that you'll receive an email that assigns your cage or your commercial and government entity code uh, when you get through their process, that is the number that the applications are looking for, and that's how the government will keep track of you. So that CAGE code is um, an important code in all of your um, submissions for solicitations or grant applications. Now at the end of uh, SAM, right before the, the search, you click Submit, it will ask you if you want to register or update your SBA profile. And that's the button right down there. And what that is, um, it's an online repository uh, managed by the Small Business Administration for all business small businesses that are registered in SAM. And it ports over your information from SAM into that when you click that button. And it also allows you to add some more information. This site is utilized by contracting officers and small business development directors and also some prime contractors when they're searching out certain businesses to do work with. Um, if you are still in the development phase of, of what you are doing, this may not be important, but it becomes very important when you're trying to sell your product or services down the line. And as I mentioned, SAM will port over information and then you have the opportunity to create what's called a capabilities narrative and input keywords. And that, that capabilities narrative just is, gives them a better explanation of who you are and what you're doing. I like to uh, refer to it, it's, it's like your elevator speech. And then the keywords are just those uh, keywords like a Google search. How, if they are going to uh, search for doing what you do, what words would they use to to find you? So when you go back to your dashboard, you should see a one in your work in progress, and then a one in the active status once your SAM registration becomes active. Um, and when you when you have done that, when you your SAM registration is, is done, there are some socioeconomic programs that you may qualify for. Um, the uh, One of the uh, popular ones uh, is the 8A Business Development Program run by the SBA. And this is for uh, minority-owned businesses. And they have a set of, of um, minority statuses that automatically qualify you for that uh, applying for that program. Um, so we assist with, with all of these applications. Woman-owned small business last fall went to a certification process instead of just self-certifying. So that's a whole new process that we can assist with. Um, and economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business is part of that certification as well. Um, veteran-owned small business is still a, a self-certification, but the disabled veteran-owned small business um, is self-certifying when dealing with most uh, government agencies, except with um, with the Veterans Administration. The VA has their Vets First program, and they have a verification process for uh, disabled veteran-owned small businesses as well as veteran-owned small businesses. Um, and most likely in the next few years, that's going to move to a certification process for all government agencies. And then the other one that we assist with isn't a, necessarily a socioeconomic program. Um, it's, the hub zone is, is uh, historically underutilized business zones. And those are just areas that the government has identified uh, pockets within a community 
where uh, they feel uh, bolstering uh, business uh, contracts in that area will lift up the um, lift up the area out of um, out of a blighted area or just increase the um, the overall uh, economic activity for the area and raise the income levels because it is based off of uh, where your business is located and the percentage of employees that live in that area. So just kind of wrap up a little bit, you know, why should you use a PTAC counselor? Well, contracting is difficult. We uh, Counselors, we can make it less confusing. And the government has a need for qualified contractors and, and PTAC counselors, we, we help you in becoming qualified. The government speaks a foreign language and we can help translate that language so you can understand it. And the government doesn't have time to teach you. That's why they have established us, is we uh, are grant funded and our mission is purely to counsel and teach each and every business that wants to do business with the government. And the best part is, is because we're grant funded, uh, there is no charge for our services. And as I like to refer to it, we are prepaid by your taxes. So, um, you know, put your tax dollars to use and, and use us. Uh, so just just a uh, last little bit, what how we do that is through one-on-one -on -one counseling that is confidential. We do not talk about your business to other businesses uh, without your, your permission. Um, we help through the registration and certification process, just like we went through today. Uh, we have uh, outreach events, conferences, training events. Um, I think we have 72 training events scheduled this year. Uh, we also have uh, outreach and um, conferences like Meet the Buyers Conference coming up where you can talk to government um, buyers one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we assist with that Dunn and SAM registration. Uh, another thing we do is, is marketing support and marketing research. And we'll dive in to see just um, uh, who's buying what you're selling and what agencies uh, are looking for what you do, and, and we help try and connect you with that. We have a, a bid match software that keeps an eye on all of the contract opportunities that are posted and uh, keeps you informed then. Uh, it'll email you anytime something is posted, and that is something that we provide at no charge as well. And we can dig into those uh, procurement histories and pricing data to give you an idea of, of just maybe uh, how you should uh, be pricing your product and, and again, who who's buying it and who the contact people are. And we will also assist with your, your bid proposals. Uh, kind of look through. Um, I gave a workshop on this about three weeks ago. And um, so if you want to uh, view that at some point in time. It'll talk uh, just specifically of uh, what we do as counselors and how to best review a, a bid proposal. And with that, I'll take any questions that anyone has. Sarah? One of the questions was if we'll be sharing the slides. So what we'll do is we'll share a recording of today's session. So you will get it emailed to you as attendees. Um, and then we'll also have it up on our YouTube channel, which I will include in a link to you. Um, so you can view any of our past sessions. And as, as Quentin indicated, um, working with our team and we can get you in touch with Quentin and the rest of the PTAC team, uh, because there's a lot of nuances for sure in terms of uh, little things that can go wrong that you'll never think of. In my, my 10 years with NBDC, I've heard different stories along the way. Uh, and it's interesting how one little thing uh, can, can trip up an application and delay things. So um, today's session really is a focus on, here's what it looks like, here's what you wanna prepare, uh, because ultimately working with Quinton and his counterparts is, is what really leads to success, uh, not only just for the same registration, but if you're looking at future government contracting opportunities as well, and finding those opportunities. Well, as you could see, just getting into the site is a process. And as I mentioned, it's going to be a hub of a lot of information. And so just getting through that process is um, 
you know, the one thing I wanted to show, but I can only take you up to a certain point on the registration. And then it's, it's a good thing as well because um, too many pitfalls, but you will need to get through that, that first part uh, routinely and just trying to get you a little bit of comfort level on that. And we did the session early enough so that you would have sufficient time for any of those delays that may occur um, as you are working to prepare your proposals for um, NSF, Department of Energy, or USDA for sure. So um, we just know that it can take a while depending on what the federal government has in store. And we yeah. want to make sure that a registration, be it SAM or anything else that's required, uh, doesn't create a delay and, and the work that you've created for your proposals. So I believe that was the primary question. Um, so with that, thank you for joining us. Again, be sure to check out uh, mbdc.unomaha.edu forward slash SAGE, that's S-A-G-E, um, and that's where you can find all of our upcoming events and information. And thank you for joining us today. Great.